Okay, so good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm doing well. I am doing well today. I'm doing well. Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I am well. I am doing well. Good morning, good morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I get my hair professionally done, so I can't, I don't, and I don't really use a lot of oils, so I can't really answer that question. And I've never asked her what type of oil she uses in my hair. Um, so I don't know. I don't, I don't twist my own hair. I'm just not good when it comes. I'm good with makeup. <laughs> I'm 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 real good with the makeup, but the retwisting, I can't help you there. So I don't know. Thank you. I appreciate the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Um today is going to be very, very powerful. Um, I believe. I don't know how I don't, I don't know if you all gonna like my message, but you know that ain't never stopped me before. No, I don't do my own hair. No, uh uh. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, yeah. So I, I've, I've always loved makeup. I've been loving like doing makeup for a very, very, very long time. So yes, this is something that I practiced. But no, far as the twisting, I can't help you with that. I can't help you with that. Sorry. I get I and I'm you know I'm a particular about certain things. I like for my hair to look very neat. I also do um the interlock method. So I don't know if you are familiar with that. Um, the interlock method, so I don't have to, so basically I can go two months without needing a twist. So my hair stays very neat, very tagged, very in place. Okay. So, um, that's what I do. And they usually last six to eight weeks, but I let professionals do my hair. So yeah, I, I just don't, I can't even do it. Um, so today is, I'm going to talk about a few things. A few things. Um, okay, so we already got somebody in here being foolish. Okay? I haven't even started. And I don't even... So today going to be the day. Okay? Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate I appreciate the, the compliment. Um, I'm working on the inner part. I'm working on the inner part. I have to be honest, right? I'm working on the inner part. Because doing ministry is like... Um, it's, it's, it's gruesome. It's grueling. Very, very, very displeasing at a lot of times. So, but nevertheless, we are here. Um, and so I'm definitely working on that. I solicit you all prayers because I really need them. <laughs> I really need them. And I'm not even being funny. I might have, I might have laughed, but I'm being very serious right now. Today is going to be a very powerful message. There's a couple of things that I want to talk to you all about though. Um, and you are probably not going to like it. So there's a lot of you all that we, so last week I talked to you all. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Thank you. Um, last week I talked to you all about forgiveness. That was last week. We talked a lot about forgiveness. So one of the things that God revealed to me is that many of you need to apologize to many people. Okay. So many of you need to apologize. Why are you saying obedience? Why are you saying obedience? I'm just curious. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I thank you for the birthday wishes. Why are you saying obe uh, obedience? Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I got a year younger. <laughs> Why'd you say obedience? Just curious. Why'd you say obedience? Um, and I'm going to give you some time to speak. I'm going to give you some time to come up with your lie. I'm going to give you some time to come up with your lie. Um, but a couple of things I want to talk about is... Hold on one second. Because see, today, today not the day. Today not the day. I'm serious. Today is not the day. You going to get blocked so fast. Like sometimes I be in the mood. Today I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. Um, I'm not ever forgiving the person who came to Africa with murder and robbery. Okay. Well, then you shouldn't be in my life. So 
You shouldn't be in my life. All right. So the reason why today is important for two reasons. I'm going to talk about something very, very powerful. I'm going to get to the message, but there is something that is pressing. So God revealed to me that many of you need to really, when I say strongly, you need to consider apologizing to many people. OK, so I'm going to say that again. Many of you need to apologize to people that you have hurt. Many of you. OK, so the Holy Spirit revealed to me people do not apologize anymore. Like people flat out don't say they if they're wrong. A lot of times, nine times out of ten, they won't even acknowledge that they're wrong. They literally won't. People do not hold each other accountable anymore. Everybody feel like they can say whatever they want to. So there's a lot of women. There's women that are watching me right now. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't. I promise they don't. Nobody says they're sorry. Nobody tries to apologize. Nobody tries to say, maybe I could have done this a different way. Everybody just so angry. Don't nobody apologize. Okay. So I'm saying this because we talked a lot about forgiveness, but on the other side of that, we need to talk about a lot of things that many of you have done. So for example, I'm going to step on some toes today, right? Because there are a lot of women that watch me on Facebook. You probably on here now on TikTok. You've actually slept with people that you call your friends. So what do I mean? So you got a friend, right? And she got a boyfriend. And you secretly slept with her boyfriend. That goes on a lot. There are a lot of people that God revealed to me that's even on this live right now. You talk so badly about your boss at work. Like to the point where you've almost spoken death over your boss. That's like word curses what you're doing. OK, many of you need to apologize to your family members. Many of you have degraded your family members. Many of you have talked bad to your mother, to your father. Many of you decided to have sex in your mother's house. OK, and so I'm telling you, let me explain something to you. I apologize to people a lot. And a lot of times I do not get an apology um, in response. Like they don't apologize for the things that they did. That's happened to me a lot. Like I'll be feeling all good. Like, yeah, I'm finna apologize to this person. And then I go to apologize to this person. And then they don't even apologize back to me. And I'm not going to lie. So, that used to really bother me. But let me tell you something. God revealed to me that you have to be okay with people not apologizing. You say you can relate. Definitely. It's a thing. Like, so you have to be okay. If you apologize to somebody and they don't say it back, you got to be okay with that. You got to let it go because it's really, really good to apologize and let go of the offense. Okay. And so it's important that you take heed to what I'm saying, because many of you are very devious. Many of you are very devious. You have very sinister ways. Okay. And so you, you don't want to acknowledge all of the things that you have done to other people. Okay. So lust of the flesh, adultery of the heart. Cause can I, can I tell you something? If you lust behind a man and you already in your mind thinking of how big his stuff is, you didn't already had adultery. You didn't, you didn't commit it to sin because it was in your head. If you took it that far and you are already thinking about how big his stuff is, you didn't already committed adultery. Congratulations. So it don't take much. It's the thoughts. It's the way that you think. Pride, neglecting the word of God. See, this is the stuff that is literally going to hinder you, right? From seeing a lot of manifestation. So many of you, there's a healing process that needs to take. But many of you have actually been the people that have hurt other people. OK, many of you have actually been the ones that have hurt other people. Many of you have been the abusers. See, and that's what you have to get to. Right. So I'm, the reason I'm going somewhere with this, I'm going somewhere with this because I spoke on this very briefly last week. Um, I spoke on this last week and I'm going to stop saying, hold on. I'm just going to get you out of here. I'm getting you out of here today. I'm getting you out. I'm getting you out so you can go on about your business because y'all are stalkers. 
I'm getting you out today. All right. So the reason why I'm saying all of this is because I'm going somewhere with this. Now, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul in Acts 16, he had a vision. He was in Macedonia. Okay. So Apostle Paul was in Macedonia. He had a vision. In that vision, God told him where to go. When he got there, Apostle Paul was beaten. He was actually beaten really badly when he got there. Now, how many times have God told you to do stuff that you know you were supposed to do? And it might come with some hurt and some pain, but you still neglect to do it. Can we speak on that? How many things have God really told you to do that you've overlooked? Now, Apostle Paul had an actual vision and he was told by the Lord where to go. OK, and so when he went there, he was beaten. OK, I didn't I didn't see the part near death. I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. I didn't read that. But he was beaten. OK, and maybe he was, but that doesn't even matter. OK, it really doesn't matter. He was actually beaten. OK, and so the reason why I'm saying that is because how many times are there things that you know that God has told you to do? And it might come with some pain and some hurt because I hate to break this to you all the way that the the fake illegitimate church presents itself is that everything that you do is going to be just like perfect. That's a lie. OK, so right before Saul, who is now Apostle Paul. Right before Saul was transitioning into Apostle Paul, Jesus said that he was going to suffer. There's a reason why Paul suffered the way that he did, because he was truly a person that was literally hurting, okay, and beating Christians. So those same sufferings came upon him. So just because you decide to serve God does not mean that your entire life is going to shift and everything is going to be perfect. Can I tell you all something? These people that's doing ministry, they are not happy. Can I tell you all something? These people having horrible nightmares. These people are being raped and they sleep by demons. These people are under great torment. They are not telling you the real deal. People are not being raw and authentic. They are not really being themselves. They're really not not and I want you all to understand something that just because something looks away on social media doesn't mean that it really is it, it doesn't these people that are, are making all of this money off of people these people that are online um these people that have big ministries and they are not uh preaching the gospel please understand me it's bigger than having money it's so much bigger than having money because everything that they're doing, they're going to have to really take an account for that. But I want you all to start getting in the habit of understanding that your decisions, the decisions that you make in your life is what's going to cause all of these problems. Apostle Paul's decision was partly the reason why he suffered for the gospel. And Jesus actually said that. So this is the part that you all don't understand. See, this is the part. Um, this is the part that many people don't get to. Right. They don't talk about Abraham and all the years that it took Abraham to be in blessed. They only talk about the manifestation of what happened with Abraham. Nobody talks about the in-between. No, it's like, don't nobody preach on the in-between. It's like, we just forget about that. It took Abraham years to be blessed. That didn't happen overnight. That didn't happen overnight. What happened with Job? The things that happened with him. It's like, we talk about the victory, but you don't talk about the suffering. You don't talk about the trials. It literally says these things for a reason. That was great endurance that had to be done. Why aren't we talking about the in the mid, the, the middle? OK, because many of us, we want to. So the manifestation of what you see online, I hate that it's like this because these pastors are not keeping it real with y'all. Majority of these pastors that have big churches, they were actually called by man and not called by God. So there's a big difference. There's a huge difference. So many people online call themselves apostles. You are not an apostle. Because apostles go through great, great suffering. 
Don't you know you're going to give an account for lying and saying you an apostle? Don't you know God going to question you? Don't you know you lying, telling people you a prophet when you're not? You're not. It was a lady yesterday telling me she was a prophetess. You're not a prophetess, ma'am. You're not. Because if you knew, if you was a real prophet, you wouldn't come against anything that I'm saying on these platforms. You wouldn't say, because nothing that I'm doing is out of, is an error. Everything I'm doing is for correction. Because that's part of my assignment. That's what, an, that's what prophets do. So number one, a prophet is somebody who, lit, who God gives them revelation concerning the hearts of man. Man. OK, and so I want you all to understand that, that being a prophet, God exposes the heart of a man. That is why my posts are the way that they are. That's why, because people are very wicked. People are very evil. People are very demonic. That is why. This is why I tell men all the time. You need to repent for masturbation. You need to repent because a lot of y'all lie to yourself. And then you come around me. And you act like everything is okay. It's not. When you around a real prophet, there is a difference because God will reveal the heart of a man to a real prophet. These people are not real prophets. They're not real prophetess and they don't understand. God would never call some of y'all because you're too weak. You're scared. You would never be this confrontational as I am. You would never be this on fire for Jesus Christ. You would never tell people that they need to stop doing the stuff they're doing. You ain't even called to this. You're not called to this. So stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Many of you need to really read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 will give you a lot of revelation concerning gifts. Because everybody want to be an apostle. Everybody want to be a prophet. Why would you want to be those things? If you really knew what it took to be an apostle, you would want to back out of that real quickly. You would want to back out of that real quickly. You would not want to be an apostle. And even if you read the Bible, you would understand that apostles go through great suffering. That's why their miracles and the things that they can do is so potent and so powerful. There's a reason why when you are at an apostolic level, your warfare is 10 times greater than a person that just teaches the word of God. Baby, it's a whole different realm. It is a whole different realm. You have to be given authority to be an apostle. You are given authority over principalities when you are an apostle. I could get real deep and biblical on here. I'm not though. But I want you all to understand you're going to give an account for all of this foolishness that you're doing because we don't believe everything that you've been taught. People are not telling you the truth. People really not telling y'all the truth. They're not. You're not being told the truth. I hate to say it, but you're not being told the truth. Stop wanting to be like everybody else and be like yourself and be like yourself and be like yourself. And so I'm saying this because what if your spouse doesn't believe a woman? Okay, so hold on. Because I'm not answering any of them silly questions no more. I refuse to answer any question. I don't want to hear anything about women not preaching and teaching the word of God. I'm not I'm not doing it no more. Anybody that asks me that question, I'm immediately removing you because I don't have time for this foolishness. I've gotten way past that. Do you know, like, I'm not even trying to be funny. I have not been doing ministry a year. I haven't been doing ministry a year. The breakthroughs that people have seen, people sewing into me once and getting financial breakthrough. I don't have time to play with people like that because at the end of the day, what if I wouldn't have done the things that God called me to do? What if I wouldn't have done the things that God called me to do? You know how many demons I didn't cast out in Jesus' name? Do you know how much stuff I didn't done for God within and it's been less than a year? I don't have time for that foolishness. I don't have time for it. Women can be speakers, they can be teachers, they can be prophets, and they can have churches. Original London Berry. And you ain't even a true servant of God. So I don't even know why you speaking. Okay? Women can have churches. Yes, they can. Women can preach and prophesy. They can do the exact same thing. So I don't want to hear any of that. And I'm not going to allow y'all to get me off course because that's what y'all trying to do. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. At all. So I don't want to hear, I don't want to go back and forth about it. If you believe women ain't supposed to preach, by all means, hop off, hop off, okay? Hop off. I'm going to, and I'm saying that with all sincerity. 
I'm not even playing. I'm not even playing. Because y'all come on here and uh, you being used by a donkey don't got nothing to do with this. Yep, I am. I'm, I'm rude for no reason. You are so right. You are so right. Yep. Oops, somewhere else. Pop somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's why I said I'm 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 just going to get y'all out of here. Because it's it doesn't make sense to even be a part of something that you don't agree with. Anything that I say, you all say I'm rude. That's fine. So if I'm rude, don't listen to nothing that I say. Don't please don't. Don't they've been blocked. I've been blocked them. But that's why I said it what it is is they want to come on to try to cause me to distraction. It's a it's a pattern. Do you all notice that? What they do, they ask the same questions. They ask questions about divorce and remarriage. And then they ask questions about women preaching and teaching the word of God. It's the same couple of questions that they ask. It's, and they do this all the time. Every time I'm on here, it's so it's just so weird. And so that's why I said um, Christians don't like scripture. That's it. I mean, yeah, they love an argument. They love to come on here and be negative and all that kind of stuff. But there's a reason. I want to talk about just the, the endurance process, okay? The endurance process is what many of us fail to, like, we overlook that part. We don't want to be a part of that, okay? And so this is another reason why I feel like it's not good to compare what you see. I really hate the way that everybody makes things seem as if, like, as soon as you start serving God, everything is going to be perfect because it's not. You're going to, sur you're going to suffer for his namesake, and he says that. You're going to have to endure things for his name's sake. Now, check this out. Imagine how salty you would be, right? If you got this vision from God, he told you to go somewhere and then you was beaten. Imagine how you would feel. Imagine how you would feel if you know for a fact God told you to do something and then you went there and then, um, yeah, God told me church has become a business. Definitely. Imagine going somewhere and then you being beaten. Imagine God doing that to you. Remember how I always tell you all that everything in your life happens for a reason. Nothing is just happening to you. Like literally nothing is just happening to you. There's a reason behind why these things are occurring. It really is. Okay. And so it's just important that you all understand this is not to discourage you. I don't want you all to feel discouraged, but I want you all to understand that there is a process. There is literally a process that God will take you to. And I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to transition into that next season until you finish well, the last season that you was in. You're not going to go from season to season. If you haven't done the last five things that God told you to do, you're not, you're really not. OK, and so one of the things that um, I want to get back to talking about is the forgiveness piece, because many of you that are on here listening to me, you have been the abuser. You have been the abuser. You have been the one that has caused people a lot of harm. OK, you have been the one um, that have caused people a lot of stress. Parents um, like for so, for example, a lot of people that are on here. You know, you have been very disrespectful to your parents. Some of you all need to make better decisions when it comes to just your family. The gossiping, the lying, okay? Having a lying tongue to your parents. Many of you all need to start apologizing and changing your actions. Because I hate to break this to you, but you really do reap what you sow. You really do reap what you sow, okay? And what you are putting out, what you're sowing, you're getting a harvest of that. OK, you're getting a harvest of that. I'm telling you, it's so important that you all take what I'm saying very seriously. If you start apologizing to people and they don't accept your apology, you shake the dust off and you've done your part. Release them and let them go. Stop talking about people. Stop talking about people that you work with. Stop criticizing. Some of you all make fun of a lot of people. Some of you all decree and speak word curses over people. You all need to apologize to God. And in some of these people, you've had full-blown altercations. Yell, curse them out. I know I'm not speaking in vain. I know I'm not speaking in vain. You all need to apologize to these people.
you all need to apologize. And I'm and I'm saying this because a lot of times we look at everybody else, but we don't look at ourselves. We don't. We look at everybody else. We look at everything that they've done, but we don't look at ourselves. This is very, very, very important. I can't stress this enough that you, yeah, that mirror. Exactly. Bingo. Exactly. You have to look at yourself. You have to look at the things that you've done. A lot of you women on here, you're very devious. Okay. You're very deceitful. Okay. You have a lot of deep rooted jealousy because of the way you were raised. So it makes you do devious things to other women. A lot of you women on here, you knowingly sleep with married men and you think it's funny. A lot of you are on here and you've done it in the past. OK, and you know what's funny is that it never came. You never got the result that you was looking for. And it just all it did was make you become more bitter. It, be, it made you become more bitter. But there are a lot of you on here. You really need to go before God. Because can I tell you something? When you decide to get married, if you don't repent for that stuff, congratulations, it's going to happen to you. And it's probably going to be 10 times worse. He's going to probably end up leaving you on the spot. Wanting to feel these voids, definitely. That's a part of it. That's a part of it. We are all under attack from the devil, okay? But you have, the Bible teaches us that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trouble. I pray, so the person asked me to pray for them, I pray that you start picking up your Bible. I pray that you even start watching my content on meditation of God's word. I pray that you start quoting warfare scriptures over yourself because you are to work out your own salvation with fear and trouble. The devil is attacking everybody, not just you. This is an ongoing fight until you take your last breath. You be fooling yourself if you said he was going to stop. He doesn't. He he may go away for a little while, but he going to come back. He uses other people. The devil is always busy. Okay? So we all need prayer. We we all have a responsibility to do. We all need to pick up our cross. Okay? You all, you want everybody to do the work for you. You don't do nothing for yourself. I don't want to pray for people who don't pray for themselves. And yes, I said that. I don't want to pray for you. Why should I take the time out of my day to answer your question when you don't even go to God yourself? Some of y'all get so offended at me when I tell you don't respond to me. I didn't say it 50 times on IG. Don't DM me asking me no questions. I don't owe you no response. You don't know not one pastor you can call, but you mad at me because of the way you see me. You need to have the same reverence that you got for these fake pastors as you do me and watch my content. And I said what I said. My IG is not for um is not for ministry. I'm actually gonna take majority of that stuff down because I'm finna go on a journey um when it comes to working out. It's gonna be filled with workout stuff. And if I decide to go on there and go live, then I'll do that. I post funny stuff on there. People don't even like that I post funny stuff. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. Go find you somebody else to follow. It's so many fake pastors out here. Go follow them. But y'all gonna learn to respect me. Because it's like, don't nobody got no respect for what I say. Why are you DMing me? When all of this, I'm talking about a wealth of information. I put out a wealth of information. I put out tons of videos. I have not even been doing ministry a year. I haven't been doing ministry a year. And then people like, oh, why are you not doing deliverance? I did deliverance for six months straight. I did deliverance for six months straight. You know how much warfare I come against? You know how much warfare is on me? You can't even imagine what it's like to walk in my shoes. You don't even know the half of it. The stuff that I endured when I was doing all that deliverance. All of those testimonies. I was getting testimonies back to back to back to back. I'm talking about like, like it doesn't even matter. That's why I don't care about nobody creating no fake Facebook page saying I'm not no real prophet. It don't mean anything to me. Because my works is going to speak for everything that I do. You don't have no pastors that you can sow into one time and get blessed. You don't even know them people. You don't know nobody. I know you don't. <laughs> how, how could you sow into me once and be blessed? And then don't even want to, you don't even want to tell the testimony. That's why yesterday on Facebook, I, I said what I said. I was like, so many people have been blessed immensely by my ministry, sowing it to me once and getting financial breakthrough. You've been going to the same church for 10 years and not one thing good happened to you. 
Not once. You think that what I'm doing don't come with a, he a hefty price. What I'm doing comes with a hefty price. Literally. You have no idea what I go through. Like absolutely none. It is actually sad. And I never hear nobody saying, oh, I'm praying for you, sis. I'm praying for you, sis. But when I come on these lives, everybody want to pull from me. They want to drain me for all my knowledge. I don't never hear nobody saying, oh, I'm praying for you, sis. How's your day, sis? How's your week, sis? No, everybody want to ask me questions. I work a full-time job. I got kids and all kind of stuff. People are so inconsiderate. That's why I say I'm never going to respond to no DMs. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me how people think. And then you're, you're sowing on good ground. You're reaping a huge harvest. You're getting bonuses. You're getting checks in the mail. All of this stuff. You're doing this one time and you still come against me. That's crazy to me. It don't even make sense. It doesn't. And then people get mad when I say, oh, I'm not answering no DMs. My Instagram is for fun. That's it. My Instagram is literally going to be for fun. And for working out content and stuff like that. That's what I'm about to do. Now, I am still going to use my Instagram when I decide to do like dream interpretations or if I feel led to pray. But that's when I feel led to do that. Because I do it so much on Facebook, on TikTok, and on my YouTube. You know what I'm saying? It, the spiritual warfare is always going to be. You don't have to tell me to hang in there. You don't have to tell me that. Trust me when I tell you I'm good, right? I'm speaking on this because of the way people treat me, okay? If I was blessed by somebody, um, the way a lot of y'all being blessed, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to tell the testimony. I would not hesitate to give the testimony. It's deeper than balance. I'm actually speaking on the hearts of people that have been blessed by my ministry. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying. See, that's the problem with y'all. Y'all be too busy typing and not listening. It's not about balance. It's about the hearts of people who I have been blessing, who have been blessed because of my ministry, who I've poured into. That's what I'm referring to. And God revealed to me that many of these people don't even tell you the testimonies. And a lot of times they wait months before they tell me this is deeper than balance i'm speaking of the hearts of man that's the point that is the point i don't need you to tell me the reward is giving god the glory because that is not what i'm referring to again i want you all to refrain from making these religious unbiblical statements because god revealed this to me yesterday so basically you all are coming against a revelation that god gave me and you're trying to make religious responses when i'm telling you this is what god revealed to me and it is very accurate OK, so I don't need you to talk about no reward. I don't need you to say none of that. The best thing you can do is either hop off of my live or actually listen to what's coming out of my mouth and stop putting your two cents on something you don't know nothing about. That's what you need to do. OK, because I said that yesterday. This is revelation. God is revealing to me. This is where this is coming from. No, they don't listen to nothing I say. Majority of the time, everybody's typing, everybody's saying stuff, everybody. It's, oh, it's so easy to tell somebody, oh, your reward is in heaven. I don't want to hear that. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to hear that. It is very hard to do this type of ministry and to do this type of work. I don't care what you say. Apostle Paul talked about it. Every A lot of people, people okay. A lot of people talked about it and it doesn't matter to me about people being offended, but it, it, it hurts a lot when you pour into people and you don't get that in return. It doesn't feel good. That's all I'm saying. OK, and so that's the reason why I'm speaking on these things. If I was being blessed when the church in the church, people talk all the time when they get testimonies because testimonies build faith. That was why I was like, why would people, why would people withhold testimonies? Why would a person withhold a testimony? It doesn't make sense to me. If you was blessed, just speak on it. And then people will say stuff like, oh, well, um, you shut your messenger off. So I couldn't respond to you. If you got blessed, you could just post it on my TikTok. You could post it on Facebook. You, I don't need to talk to you personally for you to publicly talk about what God did for you because God did it. Ultimately, this came from God. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. And, and this is why it doesn't bother me about people being offended. This is the truth. 
And this is revelation that God gave me. Because in my opinion, I wouldn't even follow nobody if I'm a, if I don't want to speak on being blessed or something like that. And I, I know I truly don't like them. It doesn't make sense. Why would you even listen to them? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So and that's all I'm speaking on It's literally just being authentic, just being, oh, hey, sis, you know, when I sold into you, this happened, that happened. Right. That's it. That's it. Because at the end of the day, this is what God is doing. OK. And because of the way people see me, this is another reason why God is doing these things. This is the reason why. OK. There's a big reason why these things matter. Because so many people want to come against my ministry. Um, so many people want to find fault in what I'm doing. You can't find any though. And you're not going to. The only thing that you're going to continue to say, I'm rude. I don't care about you saying that. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. You can continue to try to look for stuff. Yesterday, there was a girl. I think her name was Katrina. She was, I think her last name was Hernandez. She was on my Facebook page. So I knew she was being funny, but she was trying to cover it up. So what she said was, was that um, there is a Facebook group. Um, it's 19 people in this group. And they're saying that I'm a false prophet. That, that group has been there for eight months. I've been new about that group. Okay. So she was bringing it up yesterday. They, they started that group eight months ago. Yeah, they started that group. No, no, no. But listen, this is the kicker. So this is the kicker. Do you know what she said? This is what she said in the message. She said, I screenshotted the group because I may need to utilize the group in the future. So what was she saying to me? I said, what do you mean you need to utilize them in the future? Of course, she was trying to be slick. You caught that too, right? Okay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, she was trying to be slick. Yeah, she was trying to be slick. So let me explain some to y'all. There's a lot of people that be commenting and acting like they cool with me and they don't like me. Why would you even mess with someone like that? Exactly. It is very, very, very bizarre. So this is why I'm telling it is very insane. It's very weird. But this is what people do to me often. This is what people are doing. So what they're doing is they're waiting on an opportunity for me to do something so that they can say, ha ha, she a false prophet. Okay, that's what she that's what that's that was her purpose. That's why she's watching me so closely. I have a lot of watchers. I have a lot of monitoring spirits, but it's difficult for them to find anything because there's nothing. Number one, I am not trying to gain anything financially from people. I would never do some of the stuff that people are doing. I would never feel comfortable doing some of the things that people are doing in ministry because I have a reverential fear of the Lord, seriously. And I know that God would not be pleased with things that I do. Okay. Number two, I don't have any motives. There is no motives. So, so what they're, they, they can't find a motive. But that's why they're watching me. You say, hi, they must don't know you be returning money. Oh, so they watch me. They know I return money. They watch my Facebook closely. I have actually posted many a times when I return seeds. I do it. Oh, they know because they've actually, they share a lot of my content. They're very, very, very weird. They share a lot of my content. OK, and so they watch they they've seen me post about returning money because the way I do ministry is not the way many of you have ever seen it be done before. OK, so that's why I talk about being a prophet. Right. So when you are a true prophet, I'm not talking about the prophets y'all know, but the prophets of that's in the like I'm talking about when you have the Holy Spirit, like to get see my gifts came from the Holy Spirit. So I don't have gifts from men. OK, so with those gifts, God reveals the heart. So God will tell me, I want you to return the seed because this person sold sparingly or this per people actually sow into me grudgingly, which is bizarre. You should never sow into anybody. Like, why would you even want to give? I want to give that right back to you. And I want you to go and have a blessed day. I want you to understand that. Okay. Because if I have to work, 
Until I take my last breath, I will do that. I've worked two jobs before. I'm not afraid of working. I'm not trying to make money off of God's people at all. So I don't have no motives. There's nothing, there, there's, there's no ulterior motive by what I'm doing. I'm only doing what God has instructed me to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, this is what, this is the platform, right? That God told me to utilize to spread the gospel. So you're not, these people aren't going to be able to find anything on me. I'm not charging people for anything. There's nothing. There is absolutely nothing. Yeah, they're very mad, but they don't have anything on me. So what they're doing is they're monitoring me to see if I'm going to, because I'm going to tell you something too. This is a word that God gave me. He said that a lot of these people, they think that you're going to slow down and you're not going to have that same drive as you have. Okay. And so they're going to, they think that I'm going to slow down and I'm going to like, like back down on this gift. I'm not going to though. OK, because this is who God has created me to be. Also, too, the where I'm going, where the where God is taking me is going to require that I level up at all at all costs. I'm, I'm leveling up. See, I'm not trying to get rich off of God's people. That is not my motive. My motive is to prevent you from going to hell. My motive is to get you to live the life that God has ordained and predestined before the foundation of this world. That's the motive, right? So we always love to talk about how the gifts come with our repentance. We love saying it. But the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the gifts. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. In 1 Corinthians, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the gifts. So if you are not in right standing with the Holy Spirit, bingo, you're not going to be flowing in no gifts. So the gifts coming without repentance, all that means is that God has not changed his mind. If he made you a prophet, if he made you an apostle, if he made you a teacher, an evangelist, and whatever he made you to be, he's not going to change his mind on you. But baby, you're not going to flow and not now, not a gift until you yield to the Holy Spirit. And yes, I said that not now, not a gift. So we use that term completely out of context. In order for you to see who God has created you to be, you have to be fully functioning with the Holy Spirit. My prophetic gift has like, it's like heightening to a level that is like insane. Like I literally have dreams of conversations that people have about me. That's how my gifting is. So you're not going to tell me that I'm not hearing stuff when I'm talking to y'all. See, and that's the problem. I'm too accurate and it's, it's bothering you. But the, the deeper you go with the Holy Spirit, the greater it gets. And I just have to say that you have to completely yield to the Holy Spirit. I spend hours in prayer, literally hours in prayer. I get deep revelation as you continue to go and you continue to flow with the Holy Spirit. You will get a deeper understanding of even the word of God, literally like and I'm just not even saying this to you all. But it's not possible for you to even there's not it's not even possible for somebody to call me a false prophet. It's not even possible. It's not possible. I, I don't have a reason to lie. I'm not trying to get rich off of people. <laughs> I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So, no, my oil is too rich. It's too much fruit over here. I don't have to. I don't have to do anything. My God is going to supply all my needs. I don't need to try to get rich off of nobody. So, you know, those people that, that started that, it don't even matter. She, she probably already in the group and was trying to be funny because that group been around for damn months. So, you know, she, she thought she was being funny. A lot of people um, have reaped a harvest um, from sowing into me and they're very dishonorable. Period. That's just that. This has been going on since I've been doing ministry and it ain't even been a year yet. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with this because at the end of the day, this comes with the territory. This comes with the territory. But, you know, that's why I'm, I'm telling you all, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, it's a lot of suffering and pain that comes with these gifts that God places on you. I'm serious. So stop trying to want to be like other people and just really find out what God is saying about you completely. Okay. And that's just that. Yeah, so I don't I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but you said she told 
Yeah, I'm not even going to repeat that. <laughs> Genesis, you have a whole orchard over there. <laughs> Definitely, sis. And I'm working on building more. She wanted me to say something crazy so she could screenshot. Yeah, send it to the group. You know what? I think you own to something. I think you own to something. I love you too. I think you own to something. You, you know what? I think you're right. Because I was like, it was so weird that she said that. It was so bizarre that she said that. I'm like, and then I asked her, I said, what do you mean by that? She wouldn't answer my question. She would not answer my question. So, you know, it's, it's all good. But see, that's, here's the thing, right? I want them to continue to watch me. I want them to continue to watch me. I'm going to be honest with y'all. One of the revelations that God gave me is that a lot of witches are going to get saved because of my ministry. Because baby, I'm going to go I'm I'm just here to tell you. You can say what you want to say. I haven't I have not come across people I don't know anybody that's as bold as me. The only person that I consider bold is Kevin Ella Ewan. He is the only person that I really listen to. There are people that I was listening to. I can't listen to them anymore because God has revealed to me they they working with these other prop these fake prophets. I can't I can't rock with them no more. So literally, he is the only person that I listen to. He is the only person that reads the Bible. He is the only person that literally has sound doctrine. I can't listen to nothing else. I can't. I just, I can't do it. Besides the Bible. That is it because these people are too, they too faulty. You know what I'm saying? I can't listen to pastors and all they preach about is what's happening in the world. I can't listen to that because honestly, we already know that everything is open now. Every Nothing is being hidden anymore. Nothing is being like everything literally is out in the open. When you see these concerts, when you see these rappers now, they are literally showing you who they are. If all you are doing is talking about the world, I want no parts of you because I need to hear the word of God. I need to be edified. I want to hear deep revelation and wisdom. That's what I want to hear. I can't pour. I just cannot listen to these people. I can't. And that's just that. Yeah. So the thing about finding a church. And so I'm just going to tell you straight out. Right. Because a lot of you all ask that same question. I don't know why you ask that question. Right. If you've been following me for a long time, then I feel like the last question should be about a church. It should be more so, man, you know, your vow to God, right? So you all want a church, right? So you want a church that you can go and fellowship with on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday, you don't read the Bible. You don't fast. You don't meditate on the word of God. I don't understand why going to a church is going to change your life. I just don't. And I know your name. So I know because I've seen your name many times. I don't understand why you're asking that question. Right. Because the last thing you should care about is a church. You should really be caring about your relationship with God and what you're doing with him on a daily basis. That is where I would suggest that you start. I would suggest that you start with reading the word of God every single day. I talk about this all the time. You need to make a vow to God. I don't care if that's 30 minutes a day. OK. OK, I don't care if it's 30 minutes a day. So if you're doing all of those things, then why do you still feel like you need a church? If you are really you say you on a fast right now, which you shouldn't even be telling anybody that you're on a fast. Let, let me just tell you that. And you on the Internet. OK, and then you going back and forth with me about going to a church. If you was in relationship with God, you wouldn't even care about a church because you would be so close to God. When you fast, it brings you close to God. OK, when you fast, it aligns you with God. And that's why I remember you, too. That's why I declined speaking to you because of your, your heart posture, because it's very poor. You have a very hard heart, um, heart. Your heart posture is very off. So when you fast today, make sure you quote Psalms 51 and 10 in Ezekiel 36, 26. That's what you should do. Make sure you add that in when you fasting, because I really tried to just give you some wisdom that you rejected. But that's OK. She said, why expose them? Why the same reason why I'm, why you about to get blocked? She asked me a question and you saying I'm exposing somebody. I haven't exposed anybody. It's just a building to fellowship in. I'm not against people going to church, but if you haven't found a church, it could be a reason why it literally could be a reason why. 
It could be multiple reasons. You know, God isolates people. God will take you through a season where you're supposed to be isolated from people. Literally, he will do that. He did the same thing with people in the Bible. He did that with Abraham, right? So there may be a season. There may be a few seasons. There may be a year where God just wants you to engulf yourself with being strictly with him. That is completely okay. It is completely fine. Okay, but this is why I... And this is a reason, too, why I speak the way that I speak, because when I try to give people sound doctrine, they get offended. So if you fasting and if you close to God, as you say that you are, you wouldn't even care about going to a church. It wouldn't matter. Every single there's sound doctrine on the Internet that you can read. There's sound doctrine on the Internet. Reading the Bible. I don't know why you all don't realize this, but reading the Bible really does work. Every single day, praying in, the, and praying in the spirit every day, very, very powerful. Meditating on scriptures every single day really does help. It really will draw you close to God because outside of you going to church, God wants you to develop a relationship with him. You have to have a uh, relationship with God outside of your church. And so it's important. I'm not against going to church. I'm not. And, and I want people to understand that I'm not, but you need to go to the right church. And God understands that the times that we're living in, we are not living in times where people are actually, um, we're not living in times where people are actually being led by the Holy Spirit. So if your church is not led by the Holy Spirit, I want nothing to do with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. I can't listen to you. I can't. I, I just don't want anything to do with you. So there was a man and a woman that I was listening to. Um, I'm not going to say their names, but recently God told me to part ways with them and to not listen to any more of their content. I started feeling real weird when I would turn their content on. And then God told me that, you know, they are, you know, what I'm saying connecting with this um, with this false prophet. And so what's happened is, is that. So the anointing actually leaves. That's the best way I can put it. The anointing actually leaves. So it's very important that you are connected to the right people because it's actually going to really damper you. It's going to destroy you. Now, I posted a video. I posted a video. It Okay, I just posted one today. But the video before that, very important video. There was some clips that I posted concerning this African pastor. So I want to speak on this because this ties into the church thing. So hear me out. Hear me out. So say, for example, you go to a church and your church and your pastor, he says, you know what? I want more power. Um, it's not enough people coming. It's not enough people tithing. So I'm going to go and I'm going to um, do some witchcraft and some voodoo so that I can conjure up more people to come to my church. So what do you think happens to that congregation? Right. You got this man praying over you. Right. He's speaking stuff over you. If you all watch that, um, that video, he, he had to bath in like this soap. He was putting oil over himself. He had to do all of this stuff. Right. So let me explain something to you. There is a lady. And I'm not going to say her name. But I really, 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 really used to like this lady. I really, really thought she was a woman of God. I used to watch all her teachers. I learned a lot from her, right? So what's interesting was I went to God one day and I said, God, I want to ask a question because I'm so vexed in my spirit about this lady. I'm like, if she's supposed to be a prophet, then explain to me why she don't do this, 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 and this, this, this. And I'm just naming off stuff because I'm going back to when I was doing Zooms and I would be on these Zooms and I'm like getting all this revelation about all this stuff people need to repent for. I'm like, Lord, why wasn't she doing this? The very first thing he told me was that she was a bone collector. And that's what a lot of these pastors and these false prophets are. They are bone collectors because all of these churches are filled with people. OK, and so that's what he identifies her as. He called her a bone collector, a bone collector. I heard it like four times and he said, this is what a lot of these churches are doing. That's what that pastor was. He was a bone collector. 
Okay. And so what do you think happens when you allow these people to pray over you? Right. So let me explain something to you. Right. Let me just break it down for you. Do if, if you sowing into ministries and don't nothing change in your life, don't you think that's a red flag? Now, I'm speaking for people that's in right standing with the Father, but then sometimes God will just bless you even in your mess, right? But if you ain't right standing, so I'm going to speak for my experience, right? I sold into ministries and things got worse for me. Things literally got worse for me. And a lot of you all can attest to that as well. Things got progressively worse, okay? So what do you think happens when you're praying over these ministries? This answer this question for me. What do you think happens when you are under these churches, right? And your leader doesn't fast. What do you think happens to you? Do you not know that when your leader doesn't fast, that means that your leader is not in alignment with God. God could be sent. God could want to say anything to your leader. But if your leader is not actually fasting, is not spending time in the word of God, what do you, how do you think that's going to affect that church? It's going to affect that church in a major way because unfortunately people are not being taught to fast anymore. They're not. They're not being taught to fast. So it's just important that you all take all of this stuff into accountability. One of the things that I tell you all is that you need to pray about everybody that prays over you. Every person that you listen to, start asking God to give you revelation about this person's real life. I kid you not. Start doing it. It was a lady on Facebook a couple of days ago. And I may, I don't know, I did a post. And one of the things she said was very powerful because I test every spirit. Anybody say something to me, I'm going to be like, God, is she, was she being honest? I do this with everybody. And she told me she had a vision about me. And she said she seen me in a room and I was praying. She said it was three witches around me and it was a warlock. And she said one of the witches tried to get close to me. And then she got kicked back by, by you know, she got kicked. She was like thrown back. OK, she was like, you are heavily protected because she went to God about me. I'm pretty sure she did. This is why I tell people instead of you being feeling some type of way about me, all you need to do is ask God who I am. Ask God who I am. I don't know nobody that's as confident as me. I say this all the time. Literally speak to the Holy Spirit and ask him, who am I? Ask God, am I truly a servant? Ask God, am I really like this? Ask God, do I really fast? Ask, like you can actually ask these questions concerning not just me, everybody, everybody, literally everybody you can do the same thing with. Stop feeling like you, if you don't like what I'm saying, if you don't agree with my ministry, that's fine, right? Because there's somebody else for you. I'm not for everybody. And I get that. I'm okay with that. But what we need to start doing is going to God. And so what she seen was very accurate because number one, I'm always praying in my room, literally. You know, you can, you can discern, but you can, I think it's good to even pray because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something about that, right? So a person, this, see, this is so tricky to tell you all. I don't feel like everybody going to get what I'm about to say, but the best way I can explain this to you, right? So the devil is the father of lies and half truths. So what these pastors, what these bone collectors have perfected is they know how to teach you a little bit of truth. Sometimes they'll teach you halfway, right? They'll teach you halfway. Okay. And you said to sow into her, I feel like it was weird and off. What you talking about? Hold on. Let me get this person out of here. Because I just realized what she said. You said you just got off a of live where a lady kept telling people to sew. Oh, you saying you got off of a live. Okay, got you, got you, got you. I was like, wait a minute, hold on. Because I didn't understand what you were saying. Okay, got you. So yeah, that's the thing. Um, Okay, no, no, I read your message. I read, you had two sentences. So I get you now. I was reading just a negative comment. Um, But this is what I wanted to say. So they'll give you half truths. They'll, you, they'll give you like half the truth. Right. So you got to be very, very careful with that because a person needs to tell you the whole truth. Like and you can tell the difference because sometimes it'll sound good. But then sometimes it just be sounding too good. 
Okay. And so usually, for example, and I'm just going to speak from my experience. If you are a part of a ministry and they're calling for a fast and if they're on the phone with you, if you're at a church and all of this kind of stuff, right? That fast should be filled with repentance. It should be filled with repentance. Number one, I'm going to talk about this too, because this is another thing. So for example, a lot of false prophets and a lot of false teachers, they're not going to tell you the stuff that you really need to repent about. They're not. They're not going to tell you the stuff that's really affecting your development with God. They're not going to tell you that. Okay. Cause number one, they're too afraid of you not wanting to sow into them. So that's a big, big, big red flag. So if you, if a person calls themselves, if you are doing deliverance with somebody, now I'm going to be honest with you and say, there's no way possible a person should be doing deliverance with you and God has not spoken to them about the things that you need to repent for. God would never tell you to do deliverance if you're not a prophet. He's not. He's not. Because guess what? These these fake pastors, they tell you to write down all the stuff that you did and then they'll have you to repent for that. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. God would never call anybody to do deliverance if he is not connected with this person and telling this person, this part, every single person that I've done deliverance with, they had a laundry list of stuff that they needed to repent for. There is no way possible. I'm going to tell you to write all this stuff out for me. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. I'm going to go to God, my father and the Holy Spirit. And he's going to tell me what you need to repent for. I have had to tell some people some very ugly things when I did one-on-ones with them. Some, some things that made me uncomfortable to say, but I had to say them things. I've had to tell grown men about watching, you know, Stuff that they shouldn't be watching online. I've had to tell women, you know what I'm saying? That you need to stop allowing that man to go inside and penetrate the back door. Okay? Because that's supposed to be an exit, not an entrance. Baby, I have told some people some grueling things. I've had to tell women to stop beating and abusing their husbands. I've had to tell men to stop being abusive towards women. So I'm not, you're not going to sit here and tell me God has gifted you with the ability to do deliverance and all this kind of stuff. And he not tell you the truth about this person. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how that works. You're not a prophet then. Because you should be casting out demons in Jesus' name. Why wouldn't he tell you that? I don't understand that. How could you only be a prophet for certain things, but you're not a prophet when it comes to the things that people are doing? Isn't that the whole point of why Jonah had to go to Nineveh? Jonah had to go to Nineveh to tell the people about the hearts of the people in Nineveh because God was going to destroy them and he had to go over there and tell them the truth about all these sinful ways. That's what a prophet does. That's what prophets do. So it doesn't make sense to me. You can tell real quickly if you're around a false prophet. You said, unfortunately, I got an egg cleansed in this summer and I opened that door for witchcraft. So why would you open the door if you knew it was witchcraft? I don't understand that. If you knew it was witchcraft, why would you do an egg cleansing? It, it help me help me understand it. Help me understand why would you do an egg cleansing if you knew that was witchcraft? So I just I want you all to start taking a lot of this stuff into perspective. You got to start using your brain. You got to start thinking, right? So one of the things that is I won't have to do. Um, hold on. The one of the things that I will not have to do is I won't have to explain myself to people. What do I mean by that? I mean that I will not have to explain myself to anybody because the works are going to speak for themselves. This is what God told me. He said, there is no reason for you to expose ministries. There's no reason for you to come against anybody. That is not what I called you to do. The things that I'm going to do to through you is going to be exposure enough. That is all. That is, that's it. I'm going to let the work speak. I don't have to say anything. So that's what you all should take into account. You said, hi, sis. God told me to send you something 
and say thank you. Um, I think I remember you. So did you cash at me and you said God told you to say thank you? Um, because I believe you were the one that was asking about the spirit of delay. I, I have a pretty good memory. I think that's you. You said the same day he blessed me. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I know who you are. Yeah. Cause you, you sold into me. Yes. I remember you praise God in the same day. Okay. Um, and that, that's amazing. And I did see that cash app. I appreciate that. You did say thank you. I thought that was a very nice gesture. I didn't know why you said thank you, but I figured something good had happened. So praise God. Um, very happy for that. So, some, so we talking about egg cleansing. Number one, the person that asked that question, she know what egg cleansing is. She knows what egg cleansing is. So I know she know what it is. So when you get those type of cleansing, you know that you're opening yourself up to witchcraft. Okay. You're opening yourself up to witchcraft. So I wanted her to answer the question, but she didn't. Or maybe she did. I don't know. I didn't see her response. Can you please explain why an egg cleansing is witchcraft? Can you go look it up? Because my teaching ain't about egg cleansing. And I see what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to get me off course. I'm not going to do that. To sum it all up, um, you can just Google. I mean, on TikTok. It's so many witches on TikTok. For every person that's asking that question, just go on TikTok. Go in the search bar. Look up egg cleanser. It's going to tell you exactly what it is. It's going to tell you exactly what it is. All right? She says she stepped away from the Lord. Okay. Well, obviously, she doing egg cleansing. She's doing egg cleansing. Yeah. So don't, I, I'm not, I don't want to get off into the whole egg cleansing thing. Cause I don't think that's, that's not relevant to what I want to talk about, but I just want to, I, I want to get back to what I was saying because only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's not that scary. We all have options in life. So that's what I want you all to understand. We all have options. So, and th this is another thing with God. He is not going to force himself on you. It is up to you to follow him. It is up to, um, um, I love that testimony that lady gave. Yeah. There's so many more people that should have testified. I mean, a lot of you all do come on here and you do tell me, but a lot of you all don't. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Um, but I don't want to get off into that because that's going to like, I don't want to go left with the top uh, with the topic. Right. Because here's what I want you all to understand. Like we open ourselves up to these things because our own um, we, we do these things to ourselves. OK. And a lot of times I found you can do things not really knowing. Right. But then there's a lot of us who do know a lot of the things that we're doing. Now, I've had friends. I've actually been friends with Spanish. So I'm going to use the Spanish people because this is really big in the Spanish culture. I had a really good friend. This was years ago. I really liked her. She was a really good person. She was a really good friend to me. Um, and so um, she told me I needed to get an egg cleanse. Now, what's interesting was is that she believed in Jesus Christ. But she still also did a lot of other ritualistic things. And they think that that's totally fine. Right. But it's not OK. And yes, you do open yourself up to witchcraft. But for anybody that's done any of this type of stuff, I want you to understand that it's not the end of the world. I want you to know that Jesus Christ, you know, is I mean, he's given us authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy and nothing shall harm you. All you need to do is get in right standing with God. All you need to do is repent of those sins. Go on a fast. Ask God to regurgitate every ungodly thing that you consume while air cleansing, messing with, with all this stuff y'all done done, sage, or any of this stuff, right? All of these things can be destroyed. OK, if you just fast, pray and be close to God. That's all I want to say, because many of you all have done a lot of stuff. OK, there's a guy who um, I'm actually going to do a Facebook post about him. So I'm going to do a Facebook post about him. The reason why is because a week ago I had a very, very disturbing dream. And the dream was oh, it was a dude. He was a younger guy. He had joined one of my Zooms. Right. So it was interesting to me because one of the things that he told me was that he loves to for women to desire him. I thought it was very, very bizarre that he told me that 
when I when I prayed for him. So I prayed for him and he actually told me that he really likes for women to um desire him. So then God started revealing to me that he is really big in the law of attraction. This is a real thing. So a lot of men actually are doing this to women. Okay. And so a lot of women will have dreams where they're being seduced and stuff in the dreams. I want to do like a really good teaching on this because this is going to really bless a lot of you all. So this boy, he's very young. He's way much younger than me, right? But God was telling me that was one of the things that he was trying to do to me. He kept appearing in my dreams, okay? And so I seen him in my dream. It's so bizarre, the type of dream that I had. It was as if like he was DMing me on Instagram, which was, which was very, very bizarre. So I opened up the Instagram, but when I opened up the Instagram, it literally shifted and it was like I had a vision of him and he had all this dark stuff around him. He had all this dark figures around him. It was very, very weird. So God revealed to me that he actually became like obsessed with me because I it, he did something really weird. And I just told him, I said, um, I'm not talking to you no more. I'm not praying for you no more. I actually blocked him. But that doesn't mean anything because like you could block people and then they still follow you. But he's real big into law of attraction. So this is a really big thing that a lot of people are doing is the law of attraction. It's, it's really not that weird. I'm going to be honest. It's very common. Men do it and women do it. And so this is what causes a lot of seducing spirits to appear in your dreams. I'm going to do some very, very deep teachings on this because some of the stuff that these people do is very, now the things that they do is very bizarre. So one of the things God told me was that, um, um, I don't even know if I'm going to say this because I just think that's just getting too deep. I'm not even going to say that. I'm going to let that be. But yeah, I'm going to do some teachings on that because I think that that would be um, very beneficial and very, very helpful. You have to be very, very careful, too, with just like people that you entertain and people that you're talking to, like all of the above. Right. Because people be into some dark stuff. Um, I am going to do some TikToks eventually on these, um, but not as of right now. So, yeah, but I just. Um, very common manifestation. It is. But some of the stuff that they do to cause these things to occur in your dreams is very bizarre. I don't know if God is going to allow me to speak on this because I just think it'll be too much. I already got enough warfare. <laughs> I got enough on me. So I don't even know. See, it'd be like, you know, a lot of this stuff God is telling me, like, you know, I want you to save for like when you have your mentorship program. A lot of stuff is not I can't I can't just say everything. I just can't. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Yeah, the warfare be bananas. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not I'm definitely going to leave that uh, conversation alone. But it is a big thing because God told me he wanted me to speak on it. I think that um I spoke on it like very briefly already but i didn't go into detail no i don't have no what's up app no mm -mm. Mm -mm. no i'm not on what's what's app i don't even know what that is i know i've heard of it but no i'm not on what's app no, not at all. Um, so um, I'm going to get off of here because I know I've been on here for quite some time. Um, if you all get the opportunity, please watch my last teaching. The gifts come without repentance. Please share my content. It'll really, really bless other people. Oh, that's a foreign app. Okay. So that's why I didn't know because I was like, yeah, I think I've heard of it, but I'm not familiar. Uh, to be honest, I'm still not even tech savvy like that. So <laughs> I have a grandfather that is wicked. I see her about twice a year. Okay. All right. God bless you all. I am going to get off of here. My Facebook information is getting to know him. That's my Facebook. Um, thank you. I love you as well. Enjoy your day too. Um, you're very welcome. So my Facebook is getting to know him. Um, God bless you all as well. I will see you all very, very soon. Yeah, I did. I did a TikTok on it. Definitely. Yep. I'll be back on tomorrow. I'll be back on here tomorrow around the same time. Yes, please pray for me. Please quote Psalms 91 over me. Definitely. All right. Love you too, sis. All right. Be blessed. Be encouraged. You all have an amazing rest of your day.